It all started becoming clear when making a joke about a sensitive subject was having real consequences on your social and professional life. In July of the year 8 before the cultural collapse, or the year 2018 in the old system, James Gunn had been fired over his 2009 Twitter jokes on pedophilia. 2009 was before memes were used to articulate opinions. If the poor sucker had waited a few years to make his jokes, it would have all happened differently. He wouldn't have been held accountable. Because after those few years, memes were making fun of even the most disturbing subjects. Any accusation against the creator was dismissed by thoughtless statements. A meme. It's just a meme to be a meme. It's just a Which, when it came to crude jokes that offended entitled snowflakes, was a good thing. It grew into a problem when your average douchebag started using it to escape the need to justify their less than mediocre argument. Memes had become a cowardly way to hide. At one point, in the early days, memes became a caption in an image that created a relatable joke. That's when they increased in popularity. Rage comics. Crudely drawn faces used in a variety of ways to convey a relatable situation. As memes gained in popularity in those 10 years, every social group adopted those that joke about their problems. Gamers. Kids watching Logan Paul. What else do you want from Dumb sorority girls. Normies. So. Normies. Well, what is a normie? If you don't know what a normie is, then you are probably a normie. Now, normality is relative to the context and directly proportional to the object. The arguing on the quality of memes between those social groups continuously divided them until the collapse. At one point, some memes, like the hard to swallow pill, were straight out explicit opinions, poorly disguised as a joke. In those dark times when debating memes, you'd get the unintellectual, mindless answer. It's just a meme, bro to call him your tinfoil hat, because debating over something that's made to be funny ruins the joke. Disproving a meme's argument in a comment online, if there were an author, would destroy the credibility. With memes though, there was no author. There were only image files and gifs in the vast network of the World Wide Web. The debate on memes was inhibited online. Maybe people didn't want the loud, woke community to ruin their laughs with the truth about their dumb opinion. The same way shitting on mediocre comedians makes their fans aware of the shallowness of what they thought was good entertainment. It was a hard to swallow pill, but trying to debate memes was useless. Why on earth would you debate something that's created for the sole purpose of jokingly simplifying a vast aspect of life into a poorly cropped image in a 10 word caption? Any open ended comment on a meme made you someone who took a joke too seriously. Certain memes became symbols of certain groups. Questioning the credibility of a meme meant you questioned the credibility of the whole group and its members' identities. If a Star Wars fan came across a Star Wars hate meme, there's a chance they'd want to leave a comment and prove the meme maker wrong. But once again, there is no meme maker. And it's just a meme, bro. The anonymity of memes and their comical nature made them unquestionable. And as with anything unquestionable, it was dangerous. It spread misinformation, and slowly, it took control of the minds. But things were more simple during the Rage comics days, before memes were so important, before the collapse could ever have been predicted. 